drop it! What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Flet's Movies and Pop Culture 13, where we discuss all movies. I'm your host, Kyle Curse Flet. Today, we are ranking one of the best directors of, of, of today. He's created one of the, some of the best thrillers of all time. We're going to be ranking all of David Fitchner's films. And I'm not doing this alone. I got a very special guest joining me, one of my all time awesome friends and a great YouTuber. I've known him for three years now. And this is going to be amazing to discuss one of our favorite directors of all time. Michael Wolfman from Mega Movies. And the first rule of Mega Movies, you don't talk about the Wolfman. <laughs> yes. We, and the second rule of Mega Movies is don't talk about the Wolfman. Yeah. yeah um, there go. But, but, not, but <laughs> no, no. It, it's, uh, I'm, so we've already broken the rule. Damn it. Um, oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, oh well. Oh, okay. But no, I, I, it's... Um, <laughs> I'm very excited to do this today because I love David Fincher. He's in my easily my top ten favorite directors, maybe top five. Like I, I love his work, and to me, he is. I mentioned it before we went live, but how certain directors like Martin Scorsese is the king of the gangster films, how Sergio Le- Leone is like the king of the western genre, and I feel like it is straight up easy to say that David Fincher is the king of the thriller genres oh, like we had we had awesome thrillers at that point but he redefined them and oh yeah and anti and added up to what thrillers can't became so he really changed the game for thrillers for sure absolutely and just the way that the originality he would put into them and just the way that he uh just had his own unique style and all of them are just of such high quality it really says something so Definitely for yeah. sure. Rosie says the first rule of Fletch movies in pop culture, you hit the life on darn rights. <laughs> Thank oh, you, yeah. Rosie. What's up, Zodiac? And that is pretty cool because there's a movie called Zodiac on this list. So awesome. There it is. Uh great movie. Um yeah. And um Your the view Zodiac. with the Drew said he saw Zodiac recently. That's cool. Awesome. So it's good evening, Kyle. Look, look very much looking forward to your top found footage stream. Yeah, I'm doing that on Saturday with Analyze Horror. Oh, that's gonna be good. Found I, I, I let me let me tell you, man. All right, found footage is an interesting genre for me because I am a sucker for them if they are done right. But then there are also a ton of shit I, that in, do it wrong. in the found footage genre. <laughs> like, yeah, it goes both ways. Definitely, it's, genre, it's, it's it's a unique, it's a new yeah. unique style the way you shoot film. If it's done right the way it's supposed to be, the way it was made, then you can make a freaking great film and just creep the hell out of you. My idea, like, my idea for if they were to do another scream, like you wait a while and you come back with scream and you do like a found footage scream movie where they're filming like a documentary on the stab movies or something like that and as they're filming this documentary people are actually dying one by one so then that way right. it becomes a it becomes like a parody of both genres this found footage genre and the slasher genre that's yeah, like, that'd for be, sure i know yeah right. for sure hey video drew says he's, he's he has so zodiac recently it's incredible yeah i got it on blu-ray not that long ago i haven't seen it before that but i got it on blu-ray not that long like last year or so so oh yeah how yeah. you doing, Rosie? How you doing? So, um, awesome. yeah. So there's twelve films we're discussing today. I 12, 12, yes. I counted it. Um, and he's made a lot of awesome films. I'm gonna and I'm gonna start us off. And at number twelve, it was his debut. And it's and it's and then I love the interest. I love these first two films, Alien and Aliens. But Alien 3, and this is the film that he disowned. Alien 3 is definitely a step down from the first two films. Alien 3, 
um the vi poor visuals poor story poor concept that they were trying to do they could have made they could have did an awesome follow-up to a the first two alien, or alien films but alien free i know there's a fan base we're gonna respect that um but to me i thought it was just a downgrade from the first two films it was bad writing bad acting too and the story didn't didn't go anywhere and i didn't make any sense i mean what they did with ripley i thought it was an insult to the insult to the character um alien 3 is definitely where the downfall of the franchise started to be honest oh, yeah. uh, and and, it, and so, I, so what about terminator 3 that's interesting um, yeah, that's really uh, did fincher yeah. try to do the best he could but he had to yeah. follow a script that he did not like and it, it wasn't the, it wasn't his it wasn't his style and his vision what he wanted for alien 3 and mm -hmm. i heard what his vision was mm -hmm. and it would have been awesome but he didn't get to do it because studios wanted to do it this way so unfortunately that's what we got with alien 3 so that's my number 12. So it, it was, yeah, it's my number twelve as well because Alien Three, like he even, and I respect it. Yeah, I, he did take I, his name off. Yeah, I, I, I respect. I respect it when a director can come out and actually say, "Hey, this is my worst film." Stuff like that. Like Quentin Tarantino did that with Death Proof. How he said, "Yeah, Death Proof was actually not really up to par for me. Like that was my worst film and stuff." And then I and then I respect that with also, um, you, and I'm not saying like the people who watch have to agree, but like it, I still respect that that a director can criticize himself and say, "Hey, this is my you worst film," yeah. all that kind of stuff. And he did that with Alien Three. He knows it, and he. But it wasn't his fault because the studio interfered and the studio really messed with it and he had a whole nother vision and then the studio said oh yeah after that brilliant relationship between newt and ripley here's they a great really idea did. let's kill newton the, then literally in the like f just in the beginning of this movie it, it could and have been an was, awesome trilogy it, it could have been it could have been what if 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 alien 3 would have landed and been on par with alien and aliens then you would have had something up there with with like your um northern rings trilogy and all that for like the greatest trilogy of all time like yeah. it would have been high um, high up there but yeah um it's 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 definitely the terminator 3 of the franchise let's say it that way that is and <laughs> and and i yeah i found it funny you mentioned uh this being the one that like started to make the alien franchise c go downhill because terminator 3 did the same thing terminator 3 came out and that's when the Terminator franchise started to go downhill. So it was just like, they, yeah. Um, and then and then they just threw it in the coffin with, yeah, and and even off. James Cameron, even James Cameron has come out and spoken really badly about Alien Three, saying how it's a slap in the face to his own film that he created, the Aliens, and such. And and it's 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 so it's it's really tragic everything that happened there, especially because David Fincher comes out with his next film which we'll talk about soon the game and he just kills it actually it was after seven that, that was after you know? that fact. It's, oh it was so oh yeah it was, yeah oh. It's, it's seven. Oh, okay i thought it was the game then seven but yeah oh no seven no. that's even more so that, yeah, that just, was that's a masterpiece yeah. of itself that was definitely so it's like he came about. back and said hey this is what i'm made of game was right and after then, seven. Oh yeah yeah so. But no, uh, so Zodiac says there's going to be two I haven't seen for this list and a couple I don't remember real well. All good, no worries. There's, um, and w Wayne Turner, what's up, Wayne? How you doing? He said it's hi, you all. It's tw two twenty two p.m. Monday here in Sydney, Australia. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, that you're here with us. Yeah. Fine, I find Fitcher's mirrors a hit and miss with no real in between. I, that's understandable. I res I understand. I, I I can definitely understand that. Like there are some that I had that i will talk about that um first off alien 3 is the only one of his films i outright dislike the rest of it there are some films on this list that i think are just okay or decent and then it gets to kind of the more amazing masterpieces as it goes along you know so definitely uh, for sure um yeah um yeah Wayne's, Wayne, Wayne says um, Terminator 3 was still better than all the Terminator sequels after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I, but, I think Salvation was still... I, the teeth, teeth, no, I, I agree with him. But I, thing, I agree. But, but, yeah. but here's, here's the thing. All right? He's saying, hey, 
so we can so white dog shit is better than your you know Respectful. fresh dog shit Respectful. because you know with the wet with the dry dog shit you're gonna step in it but and yeah you can, and you can brush it off <laughs> I, re- I definitely respect that way i definitely respect yeah. where you're going from because um but just for me i thought salvation was the better film but it's not it's still not where i wanted it because the all old gritty war but um but um um but yeah i re- i respect that way you all have your own taste what a terminator sequel is and i respect that so that's all awesome. i do respect um, that yeah but um but genesis and dance Genesis, i genesis and um um dark fate definitely pisses me off so <laughs> when it comes to a terminator film <laughs> definitely uh, yeah and i agree it should have ended after it is better two. but like it is they, better uh, they should have done a one years. it should have done a one and two and that should have been it is for me the terminator yeah. what bugs me with terminator 3 is the john connor and yeah yeah but i i respect i agree i agree with you wayne oh yeah I, yeah terminator 2 was the last great terminator should end it at two yeah i definitely agree with you wayne it should have um but if they're gonna make a third one the the story should have it wasn't really it, and wasn't it pg-13 or am i thinking wrong i think it, it was, was pg i think yeah. it was because i because yeah. arnold was i think what this is before he went governor at the time so yeah, yeah um i thought okay i thought okay they're bringing in a female terminator but they just didn't execute it very well so yeah and and the problem my problem with terminator 3 they made the bar scene more into a parody scene of the, the terminator 2's um bar scene basically but uh yeah, yeah. so nice. it terminator yeah so but anyway what else i'm just catching up on um I'm just catching up on um a dark fart is what he calls it dude dark fate made me so mad i was pissed off at that movie i totally understand that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wayne, wayne called it dark fart <laughs> 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 yeah definitely agree with you um hey hey cal how are you doing oh i didn't know that jason statham's wife was the villain in t3 that's an interesting fact I have to go look at that. We'll check that out after the stream. So what's your yeah. number 12? Uh, my number 12, oh, I mentioned it. It was Alien 3. I was oh, like, okay. the one side of you. I was saying like it was my, it was Alien oh, 3 okay. for me as well because it was just like really um, poorly done. I respect I, I respect David Fincher and all the crew that just like came out and said, yeah, this is a terrible movie and everything because it really was. So, so Alien 3 is my least favorite. Definitely. So, um, okay, let's see. So, my number 11 is the social network. Um, okay, yeah, that's going to be much higher up for me, but yeah, yeah, it's just that you know, um, social because I have different taste what to a David Fisher, so it's all good. I still, in, oh, I yeah. still, I still think it's one of the best ball picks. Uh, but I thought you know the social network, you know, the performances were good, um, um, and how Facebook was created. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, the performances, the story were gripping. I thought that it was great and how they told the story. But now you know, you know, unfortunately, where Facebook went and how Zuckerberg is, it definitely insults that biopic in real life to me. Um, but though this is definitely, I think definitely, I can understand why it won in 2010. The social network is definitely one of the better ball picks up the 2010s for sure. And there was the group, the performances were great. It's just now, it's just, I'm just saying, I'm saying, sadly, where Facebook went and where Zuckerberg's ego is, and then there was a lie. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah but it was, yeah. but from the movie itself, yeah. it was great. It's just that I I enjoy it. Just that I just just have other ones hired, and it's all it's just we have our own oh, different oh, yeah, yeah. picture film. That's all. I still oh, yeah. enjoy the For film. Sure. It's just that I just don't watch it as much as the other ones. But it's still a good film. So. Oh yeah, no, it's um. And that's how we got introduced to Andrew Garfield too. I think. True, and Andrew Garfield was robbed of an Oscar nomination for that movie. I thought like his performance was the standout performance for me like his performance was incredible in that film um, 
It was really, really well done. So, so yeah, I, um, I, I will definitely uh, mention it again here soon. We'll, uh, we can do another, uh, we can talk about it deeper once I get to it later. But I do so love the show. Wayne says, well, I love the show. Scenario. Andrew canceled Army Hammer and Jesse Asberg as a horrible boss. Score won the best. The score was great. School was awesome you. by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Don't get me wrong, that's, Wayne. I do that's, like that's the social cool. network. It's just yeah. that there's, I just have a different taste for David Fitcher films, but it's still a great movie. I just have it lowered because I like others. That's all. It's not a bad movie by a long shot. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and I, I totally get that. I got, there, there's a top four that I really love. So, I mean, hey, there, there is one that, I'm gonna have higher than a lot of other people. So there's so it, it all happens that way where it's like, you know, you you um get the different con like people have different views and different perspectives on things. So yeah. Um but if you have it higher on your list, Wayne, that's awesome. So just for definitely. me, I just have it lowered just because there's a few others that I love more. That's all. Yeah. And that's understandable when I respect that you don't love Gone Girl. That's yeah. Right. So I, 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 I definitely, I definitely respect that and can understand that too. But um, yeah, I, I like it. But. Yeah. So awesome. Yes. So, so what's your number eleven. My number eleven is has to, has to be now. Granted, uh, so I got to rewatch a lot of films before <laughs> yeah. this. This is the one that I really didn't get a chance to rewatch it, unfortunately, before this stream. So it's been a while since I've seen it. I have seen it a couple of times, but this one might be kind of controversial. Let's just put it number 11 because I know it's like beloved by a lot of people. I just found at the time I watched it, and again, I've, I've, my film fanness, if you can call it that, my film criticism and all that stuff has become much more matured over the years so i probably would re respect this one more and it's not a bad film in the slightest by the way i still think this film is still well made i think it's still good i think it's still pretty decent but it's just not really my personal cup of tea if that makes sense and that is the curious case of benjamin button is is number 11 for me it's um i this one you know he's working with Brad Pitt again, and it does have, who, in my opinion, is the greatest actress of all time, Kate Blanchett. She is incredible in this movie. She's always incredible in every movie she's in. And I like the concept of it, exploring life from a different perspective, and it makes it emotional and very captivating. But, I don't know, it's just, at the time I watched it, I wasn't really c connecting with it as much as some other people were, so I, I need to I need to see it again. But it's 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 lower on the list, but it's still really really well done. Um, yeah, and that's another thing too. Way too long. Benjamin Button, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, is also a really long movie too. Um, but Brad Pitt, yeah, it's great. He but, um, he is great. The it's makeup, just that this, it's just yeah yeah, yeah the the I makeup mean. job on him was really really well done too. I thought. Um, and just, and I know it was nominated for a bunch of Academy Awards, including like Best Picture, and Kate Blanchett was nominated, and all this other stuff like that. So, so I I know it got a bunch of awards recognition, but it was <laughs> way too long. That was a lot of buttons. Is what I'm to say. <laughs> <laughs> I can it was, agree with that. It, 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 yeah, no, <laughs> definitely I, a lot I, of buttons. I definitely, I definitely can agree with that. Um, there was the red button, blue button, green button, that curious button. There was that funny button. There was and there that, was even I don't know what the hell hey, that other button was. There was even <laughs> see more. There was even see more butts. That's from a. That's from another. I don't uh, want to see more butts. I'm not. That's, that's why. That's why Bart Simpson kept saying, "See more but Hey, everybody, do you want to see? I want to see more butts. Don't look at me, Mo. So, <laughs> uh, but but yeah, no, uh, curious case of Benjamin Buttons, my my number eleven. So, but I think one of my favorites is when um is when um Bart uh, Bart uh, pranks Moe. He says something about cross. Hey everybody, have you seen my crotch lately? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, 
but anyway, away. yeah, that's yeah, I get where you guys go with that. So, hey, everybody in the chat, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, I, I definitely understand. So, mine's my number 10. So, my number 10 is, um, you're not frozen, are you? Oh no no! I'm oh, there. you you look like you were you the way you didn't move. You look like you were frozen. There, you're just like staring like a statue. <laughs> I thought you were uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to blend in and be a statue, or just really <laughs> focus on something you've seen over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, um, so my number ten is um, curious case of Benjamin Button. Um, I think you know Kim Blanchett and. Brad Pitt had an awesome chemistry and there was gay camera work and I, but the story is so long and there was a stuff that just didn't appeal for me. Okay. I was like, okay, David Fitcher tried to do something different first movies, but, but my goodness, it is, a, it's a way too long movie. And I didn't, the, the story, I didn't really appeal to it too much, but I thought the performances held the movie is the best part of the movie. Um, oh, yeah. the ending that ending. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It just ends blah for me, and but it, um, but like I said, it's it's not the David Fitcher tried to do something. I, I respect him try to do something different besides the movies he usually does. But the writing could have been a little bit better. So yeah. no offense, no offense. I I respect he tried to do something yeah. different. So I respect that. And 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 one of the screenwriters, by the way, I I, I want to give a shout out to. So David uh, David Fincher didn't write. It was written by. Uh, Robin Swicord and the one I want to shout out is Eric Roth, who he's written she's, films. She's doing a joke here. Oh, sorry, like Mike. <laughs> oh. But uh, but Eric Roth though, he's a great writer. He's written films like Dune, Forrest Gump, because there's a flower movie. Yeah, like he's he's a really great writer. So definitely uh, gotta shout him out. But yeah, it's definitely. It's, I just think it's not his strongest cool. screenplay, but yeah, his, his other ones are more strong. And that's just what it happens. You don't always get, you don't, you try to still do your best and it doesn't, you're not always going to make a good film, you know, it doesn't, yeah. but, but some people can, it's just, so. It's yeah. all you pinch on your taste of film and how you like it. So. Sure. It's how you, how you can determine if it was good or not. Um, Wayne says, I still haven't seen the girl with the dragon tattoo remake. I definitely oh, recommend go check so it out. Good. It's awesome. Oh, so good. Yes, it's it might be my favorite dra- girl the giant tattoo film. Like it's um she really definitely good. redeemed herself out there in Nightmare on Elm Street and really showed her talent. Oh yeah, she's like one of my favorite actresses working recently. Like yeah, she had and her she's mar- and with, she's with and, 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 and she's I think she's married to Wall Queen Phoenix. So yeah, which is who is my favorite actor. So that makes sense. Oh well, there <laughs> you go. That, so. Yeah, uh, she's so that's pretty cool. So. But I, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it when we talk about that. So, what's your number ten? My number ten is um, one, and I guess because I gotta let it sit first with me. It just came out last year. It is the killer with Michael Fassbender. I have this one at number ten because one, I watched it and I loved the first like forty minutes of this movie when he's like you know trying to do the assassination attempt he's marrying you i was like oh i'm i'm into this but then it, it, it keeps on going and i feel like it talking about being too long it was 118 minutes i feel like they could have trimmed it down and made it super tight and just you know a quick fast-paced kind of thriller yeah. but this one i felt was a little bit too long and i felt like it 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 the premise of it would have been a much better short film. That's what I feel like it would have done. It would have been a much better short film, would have been very, very interesting as that, but he made it into a feature and it's based on some graphic novel. Uh, I haven't read the graphic novel, but it was, yeah. I And I know there, it, it does have mixed reviews. There are some people who really love this film. There's some people who don't love this film at all. I just, yeah. It's been- and, and and for me, it's I I I'm not in any of those camps. I'm more so somewhere in the middle. I'm like it was okay for me. I 
I, you know, it's it's not one I would really go back to that often, but it's one that I'm I still admire it because of some of the t- techniques he did. And it's great to see uh, Michael Fassbender back in to acting again, and he's been on a long hiatus. So, I don't know why. But... So uh, I think it's something about like he was. I think he was trying to. Like I think he's like an artist or something like that. He was trying to get into that, like painting or something like that. I forget what it was, but he was trying to do something on the side that he outside of movies. But he, um, yeah. But he comes back to movies with this and Next Goal Wins and all these other ones, and it's great. But yeah, that, that he's back. But yeah, the movie was. I was hoping for more with it, but definitely. But, it, but, Wayne, but it's still it's still okay. So Dwayne said Kate Mars, her sister, is married to Jamie Bell. Yeah. R- Rooney oh, Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kate, yeah, Kate Mara is her sister. Yeah. I, the first time I seen Kate Morrow, she was in the first season of American Horror Story. That's when I first seen her. Oh yeah, she was in that. that was very, very good. Fitchner is a stylistic director, yeah. Yes. I definitely agree with you, Rosie. And his style will work for a lot of people and his style won't work for others. Which is like, it just all depends what you right. want and, and what you it's your style your taste of film so mike Fit, michael fisher is married to the hot blonde chick from yeah he is they played a robot Hello. <laughs> that so not, a robot. yeah so, so not a killer but a disappointment yeah unfortunately it's uh it wasn't the killer wasn't killer i was hoping it would was going to be but, yeah okay so i see so I'm on my number nine because I said, oh yeah, I said Alien. Yeah. Curious. Alien 3, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. And then I think you also said um, Social Network. That was the other one. Oh yes, it was, it was, it was Alien 3, Social Network, and Curious. Okay. So I'm on number yeah. nine. Okay. Yeah. So my number nine is, is the killer um yeah. well, killer we're, we're pretty similar so far so for one <laughs> i think one's gonna break here so but um the, the killer is it was it was you know he tried to return to form i think it it was close to almost great re- return for david fitchner by michael fassbissner i think it was a great role for him but um it just didn't hit the mark for me it, for what what I wanted from this film. Um, you know, the concept was there, just not executed very well, too long. Um, um, there were certain changes I could have done with the film to make Maud better. I you know I don't I don't can't remember if there was a twist or not. That's how forgettable this film was. And the first time I knew about this film when I seen Cody Leach's review on it. So um oh, yeah. yeah that's when I first seen read about but I had a I already checked it on Netflix anyway, but um, this film, I think, almost great re- return for David Fisher, but not close enough. Yeah. All the elements were there, just not what the film should have been. So, nah, and they were I slow see. in parts. I'm just like, geez, <laughs> yeah. There was, it was, it definitely, there were some parts where, especially within the like middle of the movie, it began to really dry. Like I said, I loved the first 40 minutes. Like, it, hey, yeah, it, it started off good and then it just went off the rails. So good. And then it just started going off the rails as it went along. And I was like, damn. So, yeah. It was, it was, uh, well, okay. With Quentin oh, Tarantino, okay. he said, sadly, too many movies are way too long these days. With Quentin Tarantino, if Quentin Tarantino has a, has a, certain um he, those, he's got something to him where he doesn't make his long movies boring same with martin scorsese martin scorsese can make long movies like killers of the flower moon and the irishman but you're still i get where you're getting at i get what you're getting at wayne oh yeah, um, yeah but for me um i find i find quentin tarantino more his movies more entertaining compared to, to the killer so oh yeah same and um and but even Scorsese, like, you know, I, I would be able to watch Killers of Fire Moon again over Curious Case of Benjamin Button again. You know, it's one of those kind of things. So, so it's, um, 
it just I think it just all depends if it really needs to be long to really tell this story and what how you, what you do with it. Yeah. I feel that too. What's up, Gory Tiger? How you doing, man? What's up, Gory? So right. hey, what's up, man? Um, what's up, Joseph the Horde guy? I just want to say hello to my friends on YouTube before I go to bed. Good night and see you all. Well, have a good night and Joseph. And don't ever give up. Don't let the yeah, trolls yeah, anyone tell you that you shouldn't be doing YouTube. So yeah, yeah. I, no. I know he's he, he's been having problems. Always so. always do YouTube and and, and you're gonna get and, that. And besides, even the trolls even help your channel. So just ignore and, the yeah, criticism. They, they, just they help your on. channel out. Every time there's a hater in the comments, I always actually thank them for for commenting they and actually like, help your channel too. just ignore them and keep doing yeah. what you're doing what you love yeah. and just focus on the ones that do love your channel plain and simple so yeah and if you're, you're nervous, gonna get them all the time if you're nervous just you know keep on filming and you're in trust me i look back at some of my old videos that i made and god like when i first started out i was terrible <laughs> well like, we, we, probably, we, we all are terrible when we start off. We just right? got and better from just, there, you know. Yeah, that's just and the way the, it is. That's just the way it is. And then we just get better with more practice and more practice. And more I mean, practice even and the veteran stuff. YouTubers that's been doing these for a long time, and then they're the, the and then the big then even the big YouTubers they still get the, the criticism and trolls. It just happens. It just comes with the game. But you just gotta just keep going. Yeah. So just uh, yeah. So. Absolutely, just got to keep on pushing on, you know. Yeah. So, so. yeah. So that was my number nine. What's yours? Right. My number uh, nine is another one that. So I guess from this point forward, I can say I like these films because I will say this: I do like this film. It gets a lot of criticism. Uh, from people, but as someone who's big into old Hollywood style stuff, like I love old cinema, love classic cinema. I actually thought, you know, Mank was pretty good. I enjoyed Mank. So Mank was my number nine. I think that this film was was good. You had Gary Oldman giving a great performance as Herman Mankiewicz. Yeah. And if y'all don't know what Mink is about, it's pretty much about it's set in 1930s Hollywood, and it's about the writer of Citizen Kane and like the process he was going through in writing oh, Citizen, Citizen Kane. Kane. And and to me, I would say that something that's going to be extremely controversial. Oh, whatever. Don't attack. <laughs> don't attack. Flat. Attack me on my channel for it. Okay, guys. I can. I'll, I'll take the criticism for it. I think Citizen Kane is one of the most overrated movies out there. I respect it. I admire it for what it did for film, but I think that movie is overrated as hell. And I think that that is like the most overhyped thing in existence. And so, and either that or Gone with the Wind, but one of those two movies are like the most overhyped film ever made. And so, you know, going into this film, the controversial thing I gotta say is a movie about the creation of Citizen Kane is better, in my opinion than Citizen Kane because yes while Citizen Kane I respect more because of the what it did for film I got more emotion I got more investment in seeing Mink than I did with Citizen Kane so I and I thought Amanda Seyfried in this was excellent that was her best performance she's given since like maybe Layman's Rob I don't know it's it's her best performance she's given in a while so so I thought she's excellent in this film and the whole cast was great in here, um, and and it was a great way to honor his father because his father actually wrote the script, which was Jack Fincher. He wrote this film like back in the eighties or something like that, and he was going to distribute it later. But then his father like passed away. I forget if he was going to release it in the eighties or nineties or something like that. But his father passed away, um, and he was decided to take on the honor to release this film. Love the hot take. Love it. Years later, yeah, hot, we had a hot take but, tonight on the channel. Love it. <laughs> yes, we did have a hot take. That is my hot take today. I know that um, Wayne <clears throat> said uh, had a hot take, but now I've got my hot uh, on the in the chest. Now I've got my hot take for you. So there you go. Yes, you, you pushed it. So, that, so there's this uh, 
This yeah, Sony, Sony X says we probably all have movies everyone loves, but we are so think it's all man. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, it's not the first oh, time yeah. I've seen someone do that, so it's all fine. I have also hot takes on people that films that love too, so it's so we're all good. We all have our hot takes. It's it's gonna happen. So, oh yeah, yeah no, just that. There's no need to. <laughs> so, absolutely, absolutely. So, and 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 I think that this is a film that gets too underappreciated i think mink did um i thought that was did what it did what it was supposed to i love the old black and white style of it and i thought that it really paid homage to that time period in that era so yeah 100 yeah. percent rosa you're definitely gary uh, wife, 100%. That. that's right rosa. oh yeah for sure yeah that's right rosa. <laughs> Nah, Gary Oldman though is like in my top three favorite actors. He's so good. I, oh, I even his early movie. movies are a classic. Oh, so. He's so, yeah, he's fantastic. He's so There's good. some underrated ones from the '90s. God, God, that no one talks about in his from film. Yeah, so. yeah. So, anyway, so that's that was your number nine. That was my number nine. It was me. Right. So my number eight is Gone Girl. Um, nice. Um, you know, this film was definitely, I can understand the awards that God, I think this was definitely one of the different role for Ben Affleck, but it really showed his acting chops. You know what I mean? Um, this is even before he came Batman. So I think, or after the fact, when did Bat- Batman first Superman was that the same year Bat- or 2013? Batman, are you talking about the Batman vs. Um, Superman? Because that's the first time he played Batman. Yeah, yeah. Batman, Batman. Okay, Batman vs. Superman was after this. It was uh, 2016. Was when Batman okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I knew it was close because they originally were supposed to be near Civil War, but they said, no, we're not going against it. So, yeah. But I knew around this time he was starting to train for Batman. Okay, okay. I was at the feeder still when this was, was going on. Um, but no, Gone Girl was a different film. You know, I love the story. You know, he had to go look for, you know, this missing woman, right? Um, yeah. It was, it was a good thriller. The direction was was great. It's just the performances really, what really engaged me, I thought. Then the, uh, and I thought the, the ending was shocked me, you know. Oh, yeah. It really shocked me. Um, and David Fitcher was really on top of his game, too, at the even more top of his game. Um, this film. Yeah, Neil Patrick Harris was definitely in their way, but he's definitely the most more unforgettable character in that movie. Just oh, yeah. No, just yeah. Saying. But still I, great performance, but still unforgettable. At the same time. Yeah. That and, makes, and luckily, that makes luckily, sense. Luckily, he's not in it, you know, too much longer because, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got but killed. He might, he is, oh, he he's still great performance, but he is definitely yeah. my was my least favorite character of the movie. If that makes any sense, it's great performance, just not my favorite character. That's all. And That's Neil Patrick Harris has done great movies over the years, so really good movies. So, and he's good host of the awards, so that he does. So. Great yes. actor, just yeah. my least favorite character as well. But no, Gone Girl, the direction, the story was definitely engaging, and didn't wasn't bored me at all. It was great. It was awesome. So. So that is awesome. Yeah. Um what's your number eight? Yeah, my number eight is and again, I know it might seem a little low for some people on this list, but oh, well, it's your yeah. list. But again, but again, it it is I like I, I want to reiterate, I like all these films now. I've been ever since I've talked about Mank, Mank and On, I like all these. So these are all like really good to to excellent to great films so my number eight is the game with michael douglas i think that this that this movie is really really good this is just such a you know it's a really fast-paced well done thriller it's it's one that is two hours and eight minutes but it's like the perfect length you never feel bored it is like twist and and turn after twist and turn after twist and turn and just the fact that and just the fact that you know there's so much this so much about this film is about paranoia yeah about just like the fact that you can't trust anyone you know because someone might be in on this game and there's and and it's just very 
it's very interesting and i don't want to spoil the twist <laughs> oh, for, for people because i know a lot of people haven't seen this film it's like one of the ones that flew under the radar unfortunately but <laughs> it's starting to replace the game <laughs> starting to replace the game it's all about the game enough oh yeah no you should, I, um, the other game in his prime oh yeah <laughs> and and this also uh has sean penn in it and then kind of a short role he was great um the, all the cast here is great and i just think that the film overall is just it, it's utterly brilliant and just leaves you on the edge of your seat and leaves you just questioning things as it goes along and and yeah it, it's and it came out i also have a bias for this film too i i as for as much as i love it have a bias for it a bit because it also came out my birth year 1997 so i will always respect respect the game for that so there we go it is um was it sean penn in that is that what rosie's referring to yeah sean penn yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah i yeah that's right he's in it I, said, I, said, I figured he was too i was agreeing with rosie i just want to make sure he was for sure yeah what's up dominic how you doing hey dominic for sure um Wayne says, I love, I have the game on VHS, video tape, and DVD. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> VHS, oh, if you have stuff of VHS of the old movies, that's awesome. So, that That is awesome. Yeah. And how you doing, Dominic? How you doing tonight? So that was your eight, right? Yep. The game was number eight. So my number seven is Mank. Um, yes. You know, it, it is a great, it is storytelling at its best. It really tells the story well how that film was made. Um, and, and I respect your hot take because I think it all depends what, you, what it comes down. I know what the critics and people fans at the time thought of that. And I think it all comes down what your what you think is the greatest movies ever made. It's just all depends what you think it is. So, but, yeah. but yeah, I do respect what Wells was trying to do with that film, but I, I do see where you're getting at Michael. Um, but, um, but it is a good movie to study. It is a good movie to study how to do film. I will tell you that it is a good movie. It, no, it, 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 it is. And again, I want to reiterate. I agree with you either. So. I, I, yeah, I, and I want to reiterate too that like it is, even though it's not my personal cup of tea. Like it's but me it that is, I'm. Not, I'm just saying like I'm not into it personally. I can't. But get if you into are it. people, that's awesome. But but I also I also though respect the hell out of it. And what, so you, many, and what he and for, what he did so, for filmmaking film. techniques for for what it did for film i just i have so much admiration for that movie but i just can't get into it i mean, i've tried many times I gotcha. and, and yeah. i just i just not your style it's just not your kind of yeah. film like it. but yeah. Yeah, I, I respect <laughs> what he what he did with the filmmaking with it for sure absolutely even john carver re recommended to people so yeah. oh yeah so mm -hmm. um so Dominic says my favorite David Fincher film is Alien Three and so yeah. Well, that, that, uh, no, that's a hot. We're having a bunch oh, of hot look at, look at this. Look at this. I love it. I love it. So Alien Three being his favorite. Interesting. I love yeah. it. Though. I love it. I love it. I love all these hot things. It, it just makes it more interesting. But, we're all yeah, the same with people. Sure. Awesome. Do Dominic said I was re watching Spider Man franchise to catch up on the MCU. Then I seen these guys react to films they argue for throwing out their amazing Spider Man Two reaction. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, I actually think another hot take. We're just in hot take central tonight. I think Amazing Spider-Man 2 is actually extremely underrated. There, I said it. Or that movie is I actually love Amazing Spider-Man 2. I enjoyed it in fears. Yeah. Um, I actually like it more than the Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. Right. But, so, come on. but I will say this: the Green Goblin does not come close to William Dafoe. That Green Goblin was weak. No, I'll say yeah, that right. Yeah, that, that Green Goblin was weak. <laughs> so. he, that, well, that Green Goblin was definitely so. not up to par. Great actor who playing him, Dane DeHaan's great, but I just think that. No, no, yeah, was, but anyway. So yeah. back to what I was saying: Mink is definitely does the storytelling of that, and then the, it really shows how. The story of that, it's a great storyline. Uh, Gary Oldman did an awesome job with it. Um, um, it's phenomenal. It was a phenomenal performances, and it had a, a great cast thing, too. Great supporting cast, too, to really play those characters. Oh, yeah. And it really tells that story well. And it was a great film. Really good biopic. It's very really underrated. 
that I don't hear people talk about very much. So, very oh good. yeah, I think that's very underrated too. So, what's your number seven? My number seven is one that, and my number seven and my number six can go back and forth either way. Again, like I'm only confident in my first four. The rest of these can just switch around and and just go different places. So my number, if you ask me tomorrow, maybe my six, maybe my seven will look different. But for now, <laughs> I have them placed the way they are. Uh, and and my number seven is Panic Room with uh, Jodie Foster. This is to me a very good, you know, intense, high stakes thriller. I I'm a sucker for these. What's that? What did you um, say? Panic Room. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear you properly. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, uh, Panic Room uh, was. I, I'm a sucker for these tense, you know, high stakes, trapped in one location kind of thrillers, and does just always give me anxiety and like claustrophobia and all that. So I think it's it was extremely well done. And there was a time when I watched this film, like this is back, like very the history of Wolf right here. This is back a long, long time ago, like back in like middle, like sixth grade, middle school, something like that. This film used to be in my top 10 movies of all time. Over time, I've seen films, a lot more films, and it's been bumped out now majorly. But it was like when I was very, very young, this was like in the top 10 film list for me. I was like big in the panic room. I loved it when I was younger. And, and I think Kristen Stewart, <laughs> yeah, that's another thing too. A lot of people don't realize the kid in this movie is played by Kristen Stewart and she does phenomenal in this film. She's excellent child actress in this. And I think it might have been her first role or at least one of her first roles for sure. Ooh. Uh, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, it was one of her first. Yeah. And then, um, of course this also has Jared Leto, Forrest Whitaker in there. Gosh. Yeah. So all of them. Yeah. they they all do really. And Dwight Yoakam right here. She's yeah, the yeah he, that he, Dwight Yoakam, he is also excellent in this. So, um, yeah, the whole the whole cast is great. I think the story is really riveting and really interesting. So, it's one that I haven't revisited like since I was, um, you know, yeah. um, like I haven't revisited since I was like, a, a, like in high school or so. But, but I still really, uh. Really, really appreciate this one. Really like it a lot. So, so I will, uh, I will say, Panic Room is number seven. Awesome. So I got a hot take. I think the Hellraiser Infernal's best, best of the sequels that came after the first two. So, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's not the one about the took it over and it wasn't wasn't even a Hellraiser story, but it worked. It fit very well into the Hellraiser universe. Yeah. And that was Scott Derrickson's first ever movie. So yeah. No, I I hey, I, I don't I we don't did a watch know. party to it a long time ago. You remember that? I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I remember us doing a watch party for it now. Um, but yeah, no, I I I think that one is actually very underrated. So it is yeah. very underrated. So but I know a lot of people love three and four. I mean that's fine. So um, um six now, right? Six. Uh yes, we that are was at, seven, right? Yeah, that was my number seven. So now we're at six officially. Okay, six. So the six, I say the game. Um, the game is definitely one of his most underrated films, and it's it's quite as a great mystery film, I think. Um, yeah. oh, it yeah. definitely has some of its, but the performances are gripping. It is engaging. There's a, there's certain cam work he uses. <laughs> Wayne, you're funny. Um, uh, it, it's the way he this story grips you. Um, you know, you like you got Michael Douglas, Sean Penn. Um, what amazing cast! This, um, this, this is a totally different mystery film from the other mystery films you had at that point, and it really makes you think. Really makes you think, and I oh, like yeah. I like it when it does that. Just, it keeps you guessing, and it was a great mystery film, and. It, there was that certain style of camera that he did with this was just amazing. And the game, Michael Douglas put one of his best performances, I think. And even Sean Penn did. So this film was gripping from beginning to end. It was definitely top notch writing for David Fitchner. So. Completely agree. It, and it, the, it's, and the, 
it, it's just you, you, and you and I find it interesting because yeah, he's a rich, egotistical businessman, but it's such a great character study as well because you see this man start off as very unlikable, very egotistical, all that stuff, and then he just develops into this almost like a, into a better person as he as the game is going along, you know. So but, wait, says don't panic. It's a rule. <laughs> And then Rosie says, Tom. uh, <laughs> "Tommy Wise, <laughs> oh, yeah. good gosh, oh, oh you guys you, are awesome." Uh, hey, shameless plug. You guys can check out a drinking game I did of the room on my channel. That was so. That was so, a you're, so did you actually just drink in this one room and you panicked, Wolfman? Is that yes. the problem here? Oh you, no, you we. Drink- Oh, we drank. Oh, we panicked. <laughs> what did, 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 did you, so you drank this one room and you panicked, but you couldn't get out because you were isolated. And then you turn into you're trying to turn into a wolf and you couldn't get out of there, right? So you just kept drinking. Yeah, is that what you're and doing then, on there? And then, and then the drinking. So don't panic, wolf man. It's just a room. Yeah. It's just a film. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Uh... So even the wolf man packs sometimes, Rosie. We all pack sometimes. Oh yeah, we all have. We all have our days. Okay. Aren't you pack over a room? <laughs> <laughs> and your girlfriend had to calm you down, correct? So. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm just bugging you. No, uh, no, 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 we no. have we talked in so long. I was, you know, I was just it's all jokes and fun. Oh so. yeah, yeah. No, I, I I love it. I love it. That's what I'm always here for. Oh, okay. But no, the game was definitely his underrated film is for sure. So. Most definitely. What's your net? What's your number six? My number six is one we just mentioned earlier, Gone Girl. I really love this film a lot with Ben Affleck uh, delivering one of his best performances. Uh, I never understood how some people think he's a bad actor. Like, go watch Gone Girl and go to a hunting and then come back to me. Like, and even some of his um, like the town and stuff. Yeah, the town and some of the other movies that he's done. Um, you don't want to don't count some of his dumb rom coms and other stuff that he's done like that. Okay. Oh, really? But, <laughs> so his drama really. So some of his drama, really drama shows yeah. His, um... um, but then, uh, Rosamund Pike is terrifying in this movie as as Amy Dunn. If she is excellent. Tyler Perry even pops up in here, you know, delivering a really good performance. Like, yeah, the everyone here is does excellent and i just it's another one that that leaves you guessing and questioning things and then once the ending happens and i'm not going to spoil it here but once the ending happens you're like your jaws on the floor you're like what i'm like you're very shocked and surprised by it and you're invested in their relationship their chemistry that they both have with one another is really really well done it's it's toxic but in the best way possible like it's it's i mean toxicity isn't good in a relationship but you know what i'm saying like it's performed really well the toxic relationship that they have with one another and it is yeah. it's 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 very excellent and so it, it's it was for me that was probably david fincher's most recent masterpiece of all of his like latest films like i, I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece but it, it's 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 his most it's his probably his best film that he's done recently was gone girl so uh which was hard to believe it's turning 10 years old now so that's 10 years yeah 2014 10 years 2014 that is insane to me so i was still working is, when that came out wow that is that's crazy it feels like yesterday that the movie came out so yeah i know right <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. So so yeah, and that uh, same year, God's at 2014 came out. So the make like man, how feel old you are. Oh yeah, and 2014 was a great film year. Like, there's a lot of great 10 year. Oh, there's so many. Years. There's so many I can name from that year. Oh yeah, for sure. And Gone Girl was just such a great highlight. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. So my number five is Panic Room. Um, nice. You know the filmic approach that it took and the themes that they they try to discuss in this film is amazing. And Jordy Foster's performance is one of our all time best. And even Christian Stewart wasn't that bad. Um, but her early on roles are better than what she's doing now. But um, um, this film really grips you in the yeah. themes that it touches. And it's, and, the, and then, you know, it's about burglars coming in. And two, it's just amazing. And 
Oh yeah. And it just and it's, it doesn't have much much locations in this film. It really tackles on just some of the and that's great. It, storytelling at its best and the performances that really grips you. And like I said, it's so femic that it touches on. It touches on subjects that you know that no one really talks about too. And it really great movie. So a panic room was definitely Joey Foster is just a top notch in that film, I think. So yeah, David Fincher yeah. direction too. He took a different approach to it. So, so. oh yeah. No, uh, and it, yeah, that that is one that is that's one of Jodie Foster's best performances too, and and just every it, it it it's 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 one of his most underrated. I feel like that, and uh, well, in the sense of like maybe underseen. I feel like that and and the game are like his most underseen movies or overlooked movies. Like people just don't talk about them nearly as much as they should, and it's crime because they're excellent. So. Um, yeah. my number five we're in the top five now and every single one of these films are fucking amazing I love I every that. single one of these five films here and so my number five is Girl with the Dragon Tattoo I think this film is excellent you have Rooney Mara just killing it in this movie she is horrifying she is just mesmerizing in this and the script was sharp and top-notch the daniel craig did a great job in here christopher Plummer. the the it just it's probably my favorite girl the giant tattoo movie that they've done i love the naomi replace ones but i feel like this one is even better and this one anyway the first one anyway Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure, and and it's just like that. Yeah, th this one's just phenomenal, and and also has my favorite, uh, like one of my one of my favorite opening credit sequences in a while. Like, uh, you know, when I see the opening credit to the with the immigrants on the. And the way that they open it it's so cool and i just think it's so stylistically amazing and this whole film is stylistically really amazing and and just it just works on so many levels and this is just, yeah he's yeah david fisher is 62 wayne he's I'm, he's 62 yeah wow yeah he's 62 he yeah he's looking he's looking good for 62 then because I did not think he was that old. Um, Wayne says Ben Affleck had a cameo in the Buffy Vampire Slayer movie, not the show, the movie that came before that. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I um, did not. I did not realize that, but I and I know that it uh, it won it won an Academy Award. Girl with the Giant Tattoo won an Academy Award for Best Editing, which and then it came in 2010. So that was 2010. Was, it was years. well it came out 2011 so 2011 20, so but still 13 so 20, years ago 2012 oscars yeah 13 point, years ago which was crazy yeah and and it was also nominated for sound and cinematography and and rooney mara for actress like it was and it's all as well deserved i think all those are just excellent from it from all the technical aspects in here the score cinematography sound design editing it's just yeah it's 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 absolutely brilliant, and I think that this is one of David Fincher's very best films. Is Girl of the Giant Tattoo, so. and, the, and then the best American, one of the best American remakes of a, of a, yeah, the, of an international, yeah, film ever, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So awesome. So my number four is Zodiac. Zodiac, okay. I, my goodness, this got a cast like No Tomorrow. You know, you got Jake. Joe, uh, I can't even say his name right now. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal. Joan Hall, yeah. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., uh, Mark Ruffalo, um, even Brian Cox is in this film, and they and the historical actuary in this film is just incredible, and because I know it's based on true story on the Zodiac killer, and then the, you know like 
the chemistry of the cast is amazing. That sequences are phenomenal, and the, what the storytelling at its best. Zodiac is definitely the one that best movies based on a true, real life character, real life person, and story. I thought it was gripping to the end, and it is just. I think it's. I think it's one of the greatest films of the twenty first century too. I agree cool. with people that voted it. Um, I agree, and and it, I love the directing, acting It's just incredible. So, and and and, it, and it's one of the movies that really gets the the, the history right. The actually it is right for once, for a story for most part. Uh, and David Fincher nailed this move, story out of the park. He was the right person to tackle this type of story. And there were some, br- and there were some brutal kills in this. Some really scenes that make you. F- want to throw up and it wasn't the first David Fisher the film since seven that made me really want to throw up in this film. Oh my god, that basement scene, bro. Oh, the, the 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 you know the tone mm. of it, the way they look at it, the what they put together the to, to make that film, the set piece is just and then the scene on incredible. the beach too like oh god, god. yeah that's such a hard real realistic you know. scenes in this. Yeah um, the Zodiac yeah, yeah, is yeah, definitely yeah. one of the best movies of the 21st centuries. It's up there. With a lot of the other great films of that of the 21st century, so my <laughs> gosh, so it was the first time since seven re- made you feel like, and and films don't do that to me often. Once in a while, it will, it will happen. So you'll feel like oh, oh, yeah. it's just the every detail they did for that film is outstanding. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my number four. My number four is one that we talked about earlier, and that is The Social Network. Mm -hmm. This is, to me, an absolute masterpiece, and I think that this is, this might be the best biopic of the 21st century. Like, when I think about just stylistically, how it's made, the the scores, the story itself, just the writing... Um, from the script being from Aaron Sorkin, who is a phenomenal writer, yeah. one of the best writers working in Hollywood, and this is, I think, the best Sorkin script that we have. Rooney Mara also is in this one in a short role; she's really good. And of course, you know, and we talked about some of the other actors, um, like Andrew Garfield and just and Army Hammer. And I will also got to shout out Justin Timberlake, who also is really good. And Do- Dakota Johnson has a very short part in here too. She's got like practically a cameo appearance, but she's she has a really short part in here. But it, everyone's excellent and giving great on. So I'm I'm a sucker for like law movies too, like when they're done really well. And so I really yeah. love the law aspects of this one. And I thought that the overall just this as the character study of this very flawed individual who you are also um, in a way like you're rooting for him, but you also understand just how flawed he is. Like I found it really fascinating and it is, yeah. it is just to me is an, it's so brilliant. It's, it's masterful in my opinion and, and one of the best biopics ever created. So Social network is amazing. So number three is the golden girl, the the girl with the dragon tattoo. You know that nice. is a phenomenal film. I love the chemistry between Rooney and uh, Daniel Craig. Their characters was just awesome, and I don't like rape scenes at all. Those scenes yeah. are just always, but that was brutal. But I love that she gets revenge on the guy and what she does to him. Very well deserving too. What she does, oh, to yeah. him. like he deserved that. Which that what she. Cause I don't, I don't agree with rape at all, but I, yeah. cause even took the rape scenes even more than the original did. Um, this is definitely one of the better American remakes, just like, just like the bring was based, you know, was a remake of the Japanese and that was a great remake. Just yeah. like goes with this one. This is a make where it's top nudge. The acting is phenomenal. The setting <laughs> is just incredible. They really tell the story very well for American version. Um, it is just incredible. I like I said, it's the chemistry between Rooney and Craig was awesome. Oh yeah, and he, I know, and too, and, and it was great to see you know because at that point he was James Bond at that point, and see him play that kind of role was awesome. You know because 
I didn't know Daniel Craig until he came bought in Casino Royale. And then when I see him in these films, he really showed his acting chops. Um, it is incredible. It's a well-written film. It keeps you gripping. And the, the final act is one of the best final acts I ever did see. It It is outstanding. Oh, it's, it's a lot yeah. of fun because it, it goes in every uh, single great. direction. It goes this way, this way, that way. It's just incredible. It, and the set it's, pieces. In. It's insane. And that's another one, too. That It's two hours and 40 minutes, but, but it, it, it's, it's never boring. It's never boring. It, this is an example of back when he was able to do like long movies and make them not feel boring. You know, he was able to make a, make you just feel invested the whole way through. So it really yeah. does the material justice. So Absolutely. Very, very well done. And that's my number three. So your number three. My number three is Zodiac. There we go. So oh, there we go. We're, so so yeah, we're, uh, we're we're similar, and I think that yeah. Zodiac, <laughs> I know uh, what you're. I know what you're referring to, Wayne. You can't talk about your number three, <laughs> but I, I can. I will. I'll break that rule. So. Yeah. No, my um my number three is Zodiac. I think that this film is just uh, I almost like we're. I know we're going to talk about seven here soon too, but. Along with Seven, I feel like some people have classified Seven sort of as like a horror movie now. And I almost can feel like I want to classify Zodiac as a horror movie because this movie gets dark. Well, it's a di- well, if you want to classify a horror film, it's a different type of horror. It's, it's a it's different like, type of horror, but it's like, but it's pretty horrific. Others are like the, horror to, in, in it, its own, yeah. it's like too, it depends. There are, it's like the basement scene feels like all horror, something out of a horror film. And, and, I just think all the performances here from Robert Downey Jr. is incredible. From from Mark Ruffalo is incredible. From Jake Gyllenhaal, like everybody here delivers their A game. And I just think that the story. And I know the complaints. There's been some complaints saying that this movie practically has no ending. It just sort of just ends, and that's it. And yeah. and the reason why I feel like that works for a film like Zodiac is because technically speaking. I think they're still looking for the Zodiac killer. I don't think he was ever caught. And so it's that not giving you the, um, not giving you that conclusion at the end fits because in real life, they don't have that conclusion for you because they, they weren't able to catch the Zodiac killer. And so it, so it, it, so I feel like it actually works thematically. And I think that it's really well done. And so, it is <laughs> Rosie Zodiac killer here in the chat. Oh, yep. is it is it Rosie herself? Is she the Zodiac? No, it, it could be Zodiac himself. I think that's why it's yeah. called Zodiac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. Zodiac is Zodiac killer is here. I knew it. That's why they call him watching Zodiac. this entire time. He's been watching us this entire time. Damn! Please Damn. don't hurt me, Zodiac. <laughs> no, um, it, but no, it, it is. This film is absolutely just a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. So, um, so num- so my number two, first rule of Fight Club: you don't talk about Fight Club. But no, this one, this movie had one of the best twists in cinema history. This is Fight oh, yeah. Club. You know. Who doesn't want to see Edward Norton get punched? No, I'm just kidding. He's one of the best actors of our, our of our of our time. Ever Norton, this was one of his best roles ever. Him and Brad Pitt was awesome too. Um, and even Hel- Helen 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 uh, how you say it? Helen Bottom Carter was in this too. Oh, yeah. Her sex scene with Brad Pitt makes me it makes me laugh every time because it looks like the house is going to explode. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's bouncing yeah. from, and you can all you can hear her is. Um, you know what I mean, <laughs> and, oh, and yeah. even Edward Norton's kid has to hear that. But no, but no, this movie is awesome. The, even the Fight Club sequences were are awesome, brutal. The fights, you know, when they do the fight scenes in the underground, the underground Fight Club, is awesome. And oh, yeah. and the twist at the end, the twist is in everyone. I'm gonna, just gonna say it. The twist, and you find out that it was Edward Norton's kid the whole entire time. Brad Pitt's character was just a hallucination of his. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it is an incredible, well-written film. Fight Club is definitely one of the best films of the 90s. One of the best 90 films of his time. Um, that's not horror. 
um it was amazing and i had it was outstanding film yeah yeah absolutely outstanding film and it's hard to believe it's turning 25 years old this year well i hope i didn't spoil the ending for the chat any for anybody <laughs> oh I, yeah i was I, <laughs> I hope not sorry yeah but i mean hey it has been out for like i just said earlier it's going on its 25th anniversary so it's been out for 25 and years it's definitely so. one of the best david fitcher's best films and and sure. it's one of his most popular films too so if people haven't really seen it then that's on them because it's one of his most popular films oh okay all good rosie i know you were okay. just joking i'm just being yeah, funny no. too <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah it's it, it it's it's phenomenal and and yeah i will we'll definitely we'll definitely talk about it in here soon. yeah fight club was just incredible like i didn't see that twist coming it's one of the twists i never seen coming and that's why i love a story right. like that you don't see and, this twist coming and what i love about it, about it too is apparently there's some stuff and every time i rewatch it i can notice little in intricacies uh more and more as i watch it about like little stuff in the background or what they're hinting at towards the hint towards the twist and so it even adds to rewatchability factor because just the 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 fact that apparently in shots you can see like brad pitt's character far off in the background somewhere like he's just imaginary like he it's almost like a look and find kind of thing like he's in several shots of just especially when he's talking on the phone and then he just walks yeah. up the stairs yeah yeah Stuff like that. So even this scene makes me laugh too when he, when um Edward Norton's character just punches himself in front of the bo his boss too. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, yeah, and I'm I'm on this right now. I'm actually watching it in the background. They even <laughs> made the, I'm not not everyone knows they made they even made Fight Club a game for the PS2. So oh yeah, I heard about that. They did. Yeah, I played the demo. I didn't play it to get to play the full game, but I played when there was it was demos on disc, and it was it was actually a lot of fun. I didn't get right. to play the full game though. I never bought it ever. So it's just like the thing, the game for the PS2. I never got to play it. Now I would love to. So. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. See, that's what I want with like backwards compatibility. It's like games like those. You know, find those old rare games. Like I would love to play the Saw video game. Like I haven't, I never got to play. I that. have played and, Saw one and two. Like, yeah, it's an awesome game. Yeah. So. So what's your number two? My number two, speaking of Saw, is something that is share some similarities it is seven i, this love, film, her I love her opposite here so. <laughs> yeah it is a flip-flop for us because it could go either is, way though that to, to be honest it could, it could be because yeah for me seven is just an app but the uh, i still think seven's a masterpiece though so it's it is absolutely one of the greatest films of all time it is phenomenal it's disturbing this film is Oh very realistic God. and it's, it's one of the best real. jump scares ever and we'll get to that when i talk about it oh yes one of the best jump scares ever made put in the film I, I love it and morgan freeman is excellent in this film brad pitt is great kevin spacey plays a villain which is fitting and yeah. and you know and, despite where kevin spacey is now that's definitely still one of his best roles and of course of there's all that time. I, of course, there's that iconic. Oh, what's in the box? You know, and then what, and the way he, and the way Kevin Spacey the character comes scream, to, to, you know, yeah, the, where where he comes screaming to the police station is just he, that he oh he he he's he plays he, he, that was one of Kevin Spacey's best roles and one of the best villains in a film. Oh, so. uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Like Sergio Trevorrow, he's a fantastic actor, and I think that his um. And I think that his performance in Seven was yeah. really, really well done. Yeah, 100%. So, Zodiac, even, I know you definitely Even if he's a about. shitty person, it's like his acting that, was really good. So That Sloth yeah. crying scene, good gosh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that Sloth one will always stick with me, too. Like, geez, that Sloth one was really, really good. And, and it is... I mean, there's so much imagery in this film that's going to stick with me and haunt me for the rest of my days. You know, and it's just... It is utterly disturbing but it is phenomenal so I, I i so seven is definitely one of his best films to date and i think that is just one i i i have to be in the right mood to revisit because it's just so much you know when you watch it you're like yeah oh. so like, michael so michael i'm gonna have to send you the best and worst episode 
that Frank and Darren did on the Slar Lamb of seven. They did a best and worst episode. So I'm gonna have to send you that. Yeah, definitely. Send me that. that was a, oh, it's what it's one of their best, best and worst episodes they ever done. So I'm not saying a yeah. lot, they had done amazing stuff. Oh, yeah, and I and I love seven. So I was I so definitely love that. Yeah, I'll definitely have to send you that after the stream to check that out. Yeah. So, so my number one obviously is seven. It's definitely one of the best fillers of all time. You know, you got Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. You know, and Kevin Spacey, one of the best actors of all time. They say what say where his how he about Kevin Spacey now, but um, Kevin Spacey was definitely was the top of his game at this point. You know, he's become one of the greatest actors of all time. He he played one of the greatest villains in this thriller. You know what, Brad? You know that story arc with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman goes through. Both they have their own story arcs going on there. It is top notch. So when I was talking about jump scares, that that that's that crime scene where they find the body on the bed was an actual actor, and they didn't tell the actors at all. So when it moved, it made them jump. Oh wow! Yeah, so it made them jump. So then when you see the reactions, it's genuine. So <laughs> it made that's them awesome. jump. Um, but no, my goodness, this is one of the darkest thrillers ever. Seven is a masterpiece. It it put it. I think it's David Fincher's masterpiece. It put him on the map. It defined what a David Fincher is, film fam. It is gripping, and such a sad scene. What's in the box? And they don't even oh, they, they, they don't they don't tell you, but they tell you in a subtle way where you feel like, oh shit. Yeah, you know what's in the box. And it's his, it's his, his fiance's head, and then, and uh, and he holds him at gunpoint, and he was like, at po- one point he was thinking not to shoot him, but then when he finds out his fiance, he shoots him, and that's how he ends. And it's sad that he goes to jail for it, um, you know what I mean? Or I think it looks oh, like yeah. it. it's my number one. It's seven. It's just amazing. It's gripping, and they don't show the villain right away. It's almost like you know, like Robin Williams and um, yeah, and Samia. They don't show him right away. Kevin Spacey. And talks on the phone and it's great performance all the performance all around but you can always but you can feel his presence throughout even, too, just like insomnia it's like and what's yeah. her name she plays the fiance to brad pitt's character um patra she's in the arm yeah film. yeah she's amazing in this too so this is one of her earlier roles um it's it's what yeah. what can you say the direction the acting every I mean, every crime scene just looks amazing but gross and that and that and there's some scenes that made me throw up when i first seen it and there are some movies it doesn't that happen like, often. There are some movies that have taken inspiration straight from Seven, like uh, the Batman, for example. When you watch that movie with Robert Pattinson, like that took some inspiration from Seven. Oh, and... even the Dark Knight, that one scene did too. When yeah, the Dark one Knight scene definitely took some inspiration. Many from other Seven. movies have. Yeah. So. And it, and then it made Brad Pitt the house a name at that point because he was still unknown at that point, right until he did Seven. Yeah, Brad Pitt was still, but I think it's one of the movies that put Brad Pitt on the map. And Morgan Freeman was already a legend at that point, but um, oh, yeah. that chemistry on screen was amazing, so it was oh, great. Yeah, and John Doe really goes great. down, John Doe goes down as one of the best movies in a thriller, villains in a thriller, no doubt. So, especially yeah. when it comes walking in that police station scene with the blood, oh. and, the, and then they and then this, the, the gun down, arrest him or shoot him. One of the two. Yeah, so good. Even that chasing in the apartment or where that high rise building was, that building was just amazing. One of the best running chase scenes I've ever seen. Agreed. So, yeah, absolutely. So, that's best. my number one seven. So what else can you say? There's nothing else we could say, but it's just amazing. So <laughs> pretty much. What's your number one, obviously? Yeah, my number one, obviously. And here's a little fun fact for you guys. So not only am I watching it on in the background because i've seen it so i many, figured it was fight club so many times yeah fight club but also it is my second favorite movie period of all time i adore fight club this movie is absolutely a masterpiece in my opinion it is david fincher's best film in my opinion just the just the thing is is the reason also and both of them are in like my top some one of some of my top favorite movies of all time. This this is like strictly my number two favorite movie of all time. But seven, the thing about that is I can't rewatch that as much because it's so dark and disturbing. But thing is with Fight Club, every time I rewatch it, it gets better with every rewatch. I mean, obviously that first watch was mind blowing because of what happens at the end twist there. 
and just the fact that he wasn't real the whole time and that it was all Edward Norton and everything like that. Like that that first twist is obviously crazy on a watch. But then every rewatch, you're catching something new and catching something new that you didn't catch before. And I feel like that is such a big aspect of what makes a movie so great. And and all of the characters, all of the actors, again, you mentioned earlier, Helena and Bonham Carter in here, excellent. Uh, Edward Norton, excellent. Brad Pitt, Jared Leto is great in here. Meatloaf even has a fun role in this film. So like, <laughs> so like everybody here is just absolutely nails it and are giving it their their all and i just think that because it starts off with a totally different movie until he meets Brad yeah Pitt. and and it's the kind of film that in the hands of any other director i feel like it could have fallen flat but david fincher handles it in such a like it's in such a mature way that he's able to tell this story without it feeling over the top you know there was so many times it could have felt that way but he doesn't he makes it still feel like it's it's uh, mundane in a way but also still you know crazy enough to make you think what is going on here why is all this happening and and you are on this crazy ride up until the end and then just the where is my mind like it's just one of the best endings to a film i've ever seen i love fight club i know i've broken the rules many many times because i'm oh, talking I already about broke it the ball already oh yeah yeah we're, i guess we're both sc- screwed now they're both gonna have to come hunt us down but you know whatever Rosie will come after us since we talked about it i'm just kidding uh, uh, i know right <laughs> but i'm um, just kidding Rosie. just kidding <laughs> but but yeah it you know it it's sort of like it was something like what what can be said that hasn't already been said that this film is is literally everything that movie making should be should aspire to be this is what filmmakers should strive to make is films that have an emotional impact like this but also can be just so wildly entertaining can be just so out there and can make and can make the viewer want to think on it after they watch it for a while and then we'll make them want to revisit it over and over again and so see if they what they miss so dominic said john doe were really planned everything he really planned everything he was john kramer before john kramer yeah yeah oh yeah definitely um hey you know live chat Michael's not Michael Wolfman's not real at all. I've been doing this whole live stream by myself the entire time. Yeah, there you go. I'm I'm, I'm like my own personal uh, Tyler Tyler Durden. Yeah. Yeah. Know. So what you were seeing was just me. No, it's also kidding. extremely quotable, by the way. Like Tyler it Durden is quotable, my favorite yeah. Brad Pitt character, and I just love the. I want you to hit me as hard as you can, you know. And a few other like just. I'm like, not gonna hit you. <laughs> it's 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 so good. I, I love yeah. Michael. It is great. It is great. It, um, um, Seven and Fight Club is definitely the top notch David Fincher films. Even the first four we mentioned. Oh yeah. But, don't, but even though they're all good, but the first four, especially the first two, definitely define a David Fincher film for sure. So, oh yeah. No, I, you I haven't seen I Fight Club, it, yeah. Dominic? Add that to your list. That needs to happen. That's oh yeah. No. Make it, that happen. That, that needs to happen even before Zodiac. Like add that um, to all or, your list. All the no, he was the one that loved Zodiac. There. Anyway. But you know, no, no, that one for sure for you, yeah, that you definitely need to see Fight Club. Put that on there ASAP. I'm sorry we spoiled the ending twist for you, but it's still going to be great regardless. Seven is definitely like, Seven and Fight Club is definitely in the, up there in my non horror. One, one in my in my top non horror films, it's up there. A lot of uh, non horror films. I'm not just. I'm not. I'm just saying non horror. If we're just saying just non horror films, it's yeah. definitely one of my top. Some of my top non horror films. So. Oh yeah, yeah. For, absolutely. I've really got to think of a really great so films of all time that cleans all the genres. I'd be, Oof. yeah. No, I, I have, I've, I, because I have Letterbox. Like I've created a whole, like top. <laughs> Dom says I didn't hear you spoil the ending, so I'm good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. Then yeah, think... we won't talk about the ending anymore. So you can, so you can go in hey, blind Paula. and. and That's okay, Paula. But there's you can always check the replay though. But 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 Dom, but Dom, I think you're being here I, though. 
Yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for being here. You can always watch the replay. But Dominic, yeah, don't watch anything about Fight Club. Don't look no, it don't. up. Just watch it with don't, an open just, mind. Just go in completely blind. Watch. And I know it's not streaming anywhere right now. It was on Peacock, but it's on. Um, if you if you don't own it already, that is, then I definitely uh, recommend just renting it or something like that on like Vudu or Amazon Prime. And or it's YouTube worth it's worth the rental price. Like it. So just rent it watch it it is it's and just completely be mesmerized and have your jaw just on the floor after it's done yeah so, it's nice yeah. to see you paula though thank you for being here you're always a great yeah, friend yeah, and see you too. So. oh wayne's giving us a seven fact here Ooh. oh it's, it's always good to hear um so seven fact fitcher went the wrong went to sent the Sen wrong script yeah. to the studio the one he got he hated in and demand changes and fitcher and Pit refused. There you go. Wow, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. There you go. And speaking of Brad Pitt, I don't know if you uh, heard the news that um, I know we're talking about David Fincher. We'll get back to talking about David Fincher in just a second. But apparently, Quentin Tarantino has just come out saying that he wants to get Tom Cruise in his final movie because uh, it'll be a reunion for Brad Pitt. And Supposedly, his final film. We'll see. Let's see. That yeah. don't mean nothing until he's gone. So you know what I mean. You yeah. don't have it done your final film until you because go. because get because you know, I can't see Quentin Daniel Day Lewis. Him. Daniel Day Lewis said he was going to retire at Phantom Thread, but and he came back I, again. So, I, but I've been hearing yeah, I've been hearing rumors, and Phantom Thread was his last movie. But I have been hearing rumors though that Martin Scorsese he's doing another you know Jesus based film. And from what I'm hearing, Daniel Day Lewis is going to be playing Jesus Christ in the film. So <laughs> that so like that tells you right there. It's the like champions. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure the people's champion. <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, but yeah, Brad Pitt's going to be part of the Quentin Tarantino's final film. We'll see if that stays true or not. Because I think if Quentin Tarantino figures out a story and then. When we come to Vince, he'll come on return. But I think if Tom Cruise does join it, that'd be really cool too. Awesome, because um, Tom Cruise has never done a Quentin Tarantino film, so yeah, so that'd be something new for him. Yeah, uh, Dan, yeah, did, Dan did, retire. Lewis did retire, but totally I've been retired, hearing, but not totally. But I've been hearing rumors that he is going to like. There's been some articles, some people talking about it that apparently he's coming back for for Scorsese's latest film. So we'll we'll see what happens there but martin scorsese might make him return he made joe pesci return so he might make oh Dan joe Lewis pesci return, just so. semi-retired it just all depends what they offer him yeah that's true i think yeah so and you got yeah so um i want to ask you something so what did you see ridley scott's napoleon i did see what did you think of it i haven't actually got to see it um so I thought give your honest so ob obviously care. obviously I thought walking Phoenix was great obviously because you know that's like saying water's wet and whenever you know, <laughs> saying, saying just, just to say that he he's great because he's always great um and so I thought obviously he was great in the film but then uh the rest of the film like yeah so I actually quite dug Napoleon but here's the thing is it's one of those films that there are parts where it drags and, it, and i feel like the thing that, that i have an issue with no it, no it's not the it drag it felt like it was too rushed at times like i know that they have a director's cut coming out that's like four hours and i actually would have preferred that cut because there was some elements to it that felt extremely rushed and kind of put together oh, okay. just really fast but i felt like it has almost like a cheesy how do i put it like a cheesy like 70s or 80s movie vibe to it. I don't I like I don't know how you would or maybe like a 90s movie vibe. It's got this weird tone to it that not everybody's gonna love, but like I was kind of laughing my ass off because of the tone. I kind of enjoyed it. So <laughs> so it was like it's it's really it's really fun. So okay. I actually I actually thought Napoleon was was good. But again, it's it's not nearly one of his it's still like a major downplay downgrade from from some of his other works that he's done yeah so i i it just all I, depends what he does right 
Yeah, he's supposed, like his... he's supposed to be in a Gladiator too, which I was shocked to hear. Gladiator too. I, I know the cast is great. I, know I don't think they need to do it, but I just think that the Gladiator to me is in my top ten movies of all time. Well, I first think one's a, just... the first one's a masterpiece from two thousand. So. And I just, and I just, I just didn't. Just... I'm right it, there with it, you. Yeah, it's just I don't know if there's a need for a sequel because like what else would you do you know yeah i gotta see it i'm not having any i'll just go with their open mind because the first one's a classic um i was shocked they were gonna do a second one doesn't need a sequel but he's doing one so (laughs) we'll see how this goes yeah it was it was really repetitive uh wayne i'll agree with that the napoleon really scott the it's thing been a hit and miss these last few years. I, yeah, I gave it like a three out of five, so it wasn't like terrible. Um, but the thing is, is I want to see the director's cut because here's the thing with really Scott more than any other director, I feel maybe Zack Snyder, you could also say this too as well. But with really Scott, I feel like his director's cuts are always like completely different movies. Like every time you see, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> every time you see a director's cut from really Scott, it's like a complete like you're like oh okay that movie that was shit earlier is now really good because of this director's cut so i feel like he's more than any other director has that thing because kingdom of heaven i'm not a huge fan of the theatrical cut of kingdom of heaven but then i watched the director's cut i was like dang this is good what did you just put his director's cut out Jeez. and and then and then the blade runner director's cut was better than the theatrical cut and then the he did house um, of gucci didn't he he did house of gucci which that movie i was not a fan of but here's the thing it was boring as hell but here's the thing yeah. jared leto when he pops up he makes that movie so entertaining i i did enjoy the so martian wild. though i did enjoy the martian though i will say this i did agree i did enjoy the martian so, yeah yeah no the the martian what did you think what did you think of all great. in the money in the world since they had to change kevin spacey's role to more to um that's another one. I thought Christopher it was okay. Palmer. I thought I thought it was okay. I thought Mark Wahlberg was kind of miscast in the movie. Yeah, like um, I said, Ridley Scott's been hit and miss this over the years. I, yeah, the last duel wasn't that bad either. And and but, and even though I don't think that Walking Phoenix was bad in Napoleon, I think he was still re- like good. He, in Napoleon. He, I think he did the character justice. I, he did the character justice, but that's I what I heard. Like, not what I was saying. That's what I heard. I like, was, like that's the reason to watch it is for him. Like that's isn't what he's doing in the film. Because even when really Scott like, did yeah. Alien, like Prometheus and Alien Covenant, this it still wasn't the same like he did with Alien, right? To me, <laughs> Alien I, love, I love what Rosalia said. Napoleon, not Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, it definitely wasn't Napoleon Dynamite. Then that was a better film. Let's go with that. Oh yeah, that's that's better, right. that. but you oh, know man, I. Yeah. I, I Paula has not seen Gladiator or Fight Club. Well, even Dominic hasn't Club. seen Gladiator either. So, Dom, come okay. Dominic's got some homework then. You gotta see, Let, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're starting. You gotta see Fight Club. Put that y'all, on the list. Both, both need to see Gladiator and Fight Club. Definitely. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't. To me, I think Tony Scott passing also hurt. Hurt really Scott too losing his brother because Tony Scott was a phenomenal director too. Oh yeah, true romance. Oh, yeah. amazing director. But no, he's, but when when Riz, a, when really yeah. Scott was 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 back in his heyday, he was a phenomenal director. It just all depends what he does now. So he's a hit and miss. It's just yeah, he movie. he's sort of in the part of his American career. Gangster was awesome. Yeah, yeah, American Gangster was great. Uh, his last truly great film was the martian although i did like the last duel i will say that like i i watched the last duel and i was like yeah this is actually like pretty good not gonna lie um so so <laughs> even though I like the last duel, that's yeah oh the boring in the world <laughs> <laughs> roasted <laughs> the last boy scout yeah that's another great tony scott film yeah tony scott was great unfortunately he lost him i think it his brother's passing didn't help either so i started yeah. to notice his decline it just all depends what he does. That that goes with any director. So it all depends. It does your vision and passion and the story too? Because sometimes this, this, it's all depends. And yeah, and and right now we're still uh, we're still discussing it, guys. And we'll let y'all know, but we're trying to debate on which director to do next. And I brought up either doing Stanley Kubrick or the Coen Brothers. That was that would be fun to do. One what was the two. third person you said? Or Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah, so so after this stream on both our channels, we're gonna put a poll 
for the next director ranking we're going to do. So it's going to be the Coen brothers or Stanley Kubrick or Wes Anderson, right? Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Paul, Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah, the one that did like There Will Be Blood and Punch Drunk Love and stuff like that. So Yeah, so yeah. we're going to we're gonna definitely put... Maybe eventually we'll do Ridley Scott. Uh, uh, yeah, Ridley Scott would also be... Maybe we could we'll do, do that four, down the road. We could do a four-way poll if we want. We'll, we'll add Ridley Scott to that too. So you guys yeah. will vote. Yeah. Well, you guys can vote. We'll put a poll and see what... Whatever, whatever ranking gets voted, we'll do that next director's ranking. So we'll make it. We'll we'll, we'll put make it more fun. Whoever gets chosen gets chosen. So I can't wait to see which one we get to do first. So. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. So before I, we I mean, go off, Michael, you want to let the viewers know where they find you and what you got coming on your channel? Uh, yeah, you can find me on my channel, Mega Movies, where I will, I film a bunch of reviews. Yeah, record food, green and. Oh, <laughs> funny oh god dude good god, god. Oh, god that'd be no. the most depressing ring i'd be i would just sit here being like just exorcist believer is you let's know, not push it down no, no, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah it just be, no i would i would totally not be down for that um but no you can find me on my youtube channel my movies where i do a bunch of reviews i'll be um maybe this week I'll be giving you guys a rant. It's not really going to be a review. I just I need to talk about it. So I'm going to be giving you guys a rant from Madam Web probably this week. I saw it. I'm not I actually seeing went, it. I actually went to the theater. I watched it, and so I need to rant about this movie. So I might make a whole like angry <laughs> yelling rant. I seen Cody Leach's review. And, and that's good for me. So. And then, um, and then. Uh, of course, I also do an awards coverage um, show on the channel with the award season happening, so you guys can check that out. We'll be bringing that back again this week to just discuss some of the awards that's been happening. And, yeah, and also just a lot of fun things uh, coming your way in the, in the month of March as well. So just, yeah, subscribe and be on the lookout for all Respect the... Respect that, Dominic. I've seen, I've seen my one. Enjoy, okay. enjoy it. That's fine. Interesting. Yeah. Just the way I, mean, I, know I, I will give you this. I will give you, I will say this, Dominic. I am going to, it is going to be rant, but I will say I have not laughed that hard at a comic book movie in quite some time. Like, I wasn't a fan of it. Like, it's a bad movie, in my opinion. But I got to say, like, was it entertaining? Hell yes. Because I was laughing so hard and i know it was unintentional but i was laughing he laughed so hard even his places. beard walked out of there it did i think it almost did i was like <sighs> i like i felt even like his I hair actually, just like i, I okay. felt like i was gonna die i felt like i was in the theater i was gonna die from like a exploded lung because i was laughing so hard <laughs> i got worried he laughed so hard he laughed so hard even explode. his hair yeah. got up and just walked out the door yeah <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Oh man, yeah. yeah, awesome! So that's what you got going. That's what I, uh, yeah. He laughed as well when he saw it. Yeah, it's is hilarious. So yeah, it. Um, but yeah, that's what I got coming up on the channel. So, so, so you guys, if you're not subscribed to Mega Movies, go subscribe to me. Descriptions in below. So, and I'm at, and I'm mm. at four fifty three now. Not four fifty three now. I'm halfway to five hundred. So. awesome man yeah that's, yeah that's, that's great so as for me i will have I, tomorrow on my k from popular popcorn my co-host will be doing a kkj reviews with our other co-host jason the jason nice one we we're doing a movie review of john Moo's. i think is his best hollywood film face off so that's oh, gonna be yeah. a good movie to review so and then of course this this saturday i'll be doing a top found footage film with lauren from online's horror with lauren we did this would be we just be discussing as much of our top found footage films as possible so that's gonna be a lot of fun my top um, found footage film of all time has to be wrecked i love that movie so much it's just uh, all right so it's a good one too um and then on the 26th geez i'm gonna be busy on the 26th so the 26th on my channel i'm gonna be um I'm gonna be on gonna be interviewing Kevin Ball. He was the stunt double for the original Creeper and Jeepers Creepers. Um, he's also stunt double for Matt Dale and Matt Dillon. 
Matt Dillon, or Kevin Dillon in in um, Wild Things, and he's even done stunts for Bad Boys, Terminator Genesis. He's done stunts for amazing stuff. But I can't wait to see his um, see, talk about his, the scenes that he did as the Creeper. He stunt double for the Creeper. So, right. um, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. And then later that night, I'll be, be on my pat on the, my um, my good friend Patrick's channel. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. And stay tuned for other amazing stuff that I got for, for this channel coming up. And I also, um, I also um, will be um, got a couple of other interviews I got locked down that will come down eventually for this channel. So, and I will tell you. I'll, and sometime in March, sometime in March, um, Jay from Junk Drunk Freepio will be coming on the channel. So. That is gonna be an awesome stream. So, be all who not who if you all who that it is awesome. If not, go check him out. Drunk Free Peel, Jay from Drunk Free Peel. So, John Thursday, I like that. Yeah, yeah. um, because he's he's awesome. So we're gonna do some pop culture pop culture discussion and discuss his 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 comic books books he's got going on and many other things. We'll discuss a lot of things. So. Right. And with that being said, thank you for everyone who joined, who was here in the chat, and enjoyed this awesome discussion, this awesome ranking that me and Michael Wolfman did. Thank you for Wolfman for coming on to do this David Fitcher ranking. We'll have a new poll so thank you guys you. can vote for our yeah. next director's ranking we'll be doing. Um, so that's going to be awesome. With that being said, oh, thank you no. for all for watching. Hope you have an amazing enjoy the rest of your Sunday and a great week coming up. We'll see y'all later, everyone. Bye. See you there.